Ori and the Will of the Wisps has been my favorite game since its release in March of 2020, a captivating metroidvania that focuses on a spirit named Ori and their journey to heal Nguyen from the corruption that has spread through its vast domain. An emotional story that at times can be somber is often uplifted by the brightness of its friendly creatures peppered throughout Nguyen. Beyond that, its movement and vast expanse of area to explore allows it to be one of my favorite games not only to play but to speedrun. I'm Big Deutsch, and here are five reasons why I think Ori and the Will of the Wisps might be one of the most fun speedrunning games you ever play. Number one, the movement. The movement is great for so many reasons. It's fast, responsive, but also feels very grounded. Ori feels as though they have weight, and that accurate movement really matters because a false step could mean a loss of time or a dead run. Runs that are competitive for the top times always showcase optimal movement as the main delineator between first and the rest. Minimal RMG in the game means that clean movement via player input is critical for good times to be achieved. As you build skill, you'll be able to use techniques such as dash cancelling, sentry jumping, wave dashing, and many more pieces of tech that have been found to create time saves where there otherwise wouldn't be any. Combat is fluid, feels very controllable, and is integrated into Ori's movement seamlessly to allow things such as dash cancels as well as dash and double jump resets to cleanly speed Ori along on the way to a world record. With practice, combat can be optimized for speed while still maintaining its challenge during boss fights. Integration of all these different skills in various ways allow runners to continuously improve on current routes and allow individuals to find optimization that work for them and their style. The potential for rooting is vast due to the many different upgrades and pickup locations available, which could allow for new routes to be discovered that could save time. This leads into the second reason why Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a great game to pick up as a speedrunner, the community. There's a great passion for this game in its speedrunning community, and the runners are constantly working together to find new strats, tech, and optimizations to improve time. The community is very welcoming to newcomers who are trying to learn, and many members of the community have dedicated many hours to creating beginner-friendly guides to help jumpstart those eager to learn the basic strategies and more nuanced aspects of the game. These can be essential to become a good runner. The community often organizes races, tournaments, and individual level competitions in order to see what optimizations runners can come up with within a friendly, competitive manner. The community congregates in the Ori Speedrun Discord, which is linked below for those looking to get started with running or are interested in finding out what the community is all about. Number three, the variety of categories. The variety found in the community also brings with it the variety in the many categories that are available to run. Whether you are looking for quick runs, meme runs, runs that are integrated into the game itself, named Spirit Trials, or longer runs, I promise you there is a category out there for everyone watching this video. Personally, I love to run any percent NMG in the main quest order or MQO categories due to the pace of the any percent category and the way that MQO explores the large extent of the game in a fast paced manner. Spirit Trials are the game's own version of speedruns with an integrated leaderboard and have very competitive time. The level of optimizations have reduced the difference between first, second and third to being just tenths of a second or less. The difference between the categories is also quite significant in terms of gameplay which is shown by the fact that there is seldom a single person holding multiple world records across many categories. One of the things that makes this game unique and special in terms of speedrunning is the tools available to practice. With so much to learn, it can seem like a daunting task for new runners and even experienced runners. This is where all these amazing tools come into play. Ori and the Will of the Wisps has so many tools available to help runners learn, improve, practice, and understand runs so that they can practice the way they want at the pace they want without restriction. These tools include the debugger, which is an amazing tool that helps the player to change things like their location, HP and energy levels, shards equipped, and to load save states. These save states are easily adjustable and creatable and are a great way to improve. Additionally, the debugger allows you to render obstacles, save points, and barriers in order to clearly see where Ori will collide with things, even when it may not be obvious. Additional tools include the Will of the Wisp Manager, which allows you to see Ori's specific coordinates for creating accurate setups, the Routing Tool, which helps to create routes to learn and follow along with, and it also allows for easy visualization of different options for routes that a player might opt to try. 
Finally, another great tool that makes speedrunning life easier is the auto splitter that is available through Live Split. This auto splitter can be configured before runs in order to split automatically at certain points in the game and can be configured in almost any way the runner wants to create splits that will progress automatically with the runner. This allows the player to focus on their runs while Live Split does its job in the background, allowing for very accurately timed splits and peace of mind having all your fingers on the controller during these precious moments. Tutorials on how to use all of these tools are available on speedrun.com or in the Airy Speedrun Discord. You'll never find yourself bored playing this game on repeat because the amazing art and music allows for thorough enjoyment on many repeated playthroughs. The game showcases a beautiful art style carried forward from the first game, Oriya in the Blind Forest, along with the music that is perfectly matched and adapted to the situations that the player may find themselves in. Even on many repeated hearings, the soundtrack never seems to get old and can still evoke emotion at the drop of a hat. The mix of unique enemies, dangerously unique obstacles, and the integration of foreground and background art is part of what makes this game feel special. You're always able to see what you can walk and interact with, but you never feel disjointed from the beautiful world lurking behind the foreground. This art isn't just there to be appreciated by the runner, as many of these unique features of the landscape and audio allows the runner to create cues and setups in order to perform certain actions. Overall, the art style brings the game to life with its vibrant colors and friendly creatures, and it is as varied as the regions throughout the world in which Ori lives. The bright life is contrasted and balanced with somber tones and dark themes to keep the player engaged and ready to get hit in the feels at a moment's notice. I love this game, and the artistic direction is one of the main reasons why. I would like to take this chance to highlight the randomizer that has been put together by many members of the community. This randomizer is so much fun and provides a freshness to the game for those who want to try out the game in a different style than the vanilla playthroughs or speedruns. The randomizer can be found through the Discord and offers many options in customizing the settings and what kind of rando you want to play. There is functionality baked into the randomizer that includes info about what's being collected as well as a logic filter that helps struggling players with which pickups to go for when they are stuck. It is so easy to get started and so much fun that I think everyone should give it a go. On top of that, there's Plandos for someone who wants something a bit more structured to allow them to have a fun playthrough that is unique and varied from the original playthrough. And that's it, five reasons why you should speedrun Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like the video and leave a comment about what you're excited to try. If you already run this game, then tell me what your favorite part of the game is to run. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the Discord. Ciao guys, bye.